Welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. My most popular video of all time ever is about derived alternate minimums. And so I am going to update, refresh, whatever that video with even more examples for you to learn about how to derive alternate minimums. But first I want us to give a shout out to listener.io, which is a place where you can get safe mental support as a pilot and counseling visits are online. Please use this link to check out their services and you can use promo code Laura for 15% off your first visit. So let me tell you guys about derived alternate minimum. This is where part 121 operators can use OPSPEC C55. Here's an example for figuring out alternate minimums that are unique to that airport, that wind, the NOTAMs. And we're going to go through those examples today and how to actually do that. I've got several examples kind of refresh this video's content from super long time ago. All right. And so we're going to unpack it. I want to also go to the bottom part of C55. So here's some more content about this. And here are some important notes that you have to pay attention to on here. First off, if you see note number two, that says if you use the alternate airport weather minimums, you can't use approaches where alternate minimums are listed as not authorized. Where do we find this? It is on typically the 10-9 or the 10-9A page from Jeppesen. So you notice here, this airport has other listed and it says NA. If any approaches are listed with that NA under it on this part, and this is the Jeppesen chart that I pulled, you cannot use those approaches when doing derived alternate minimums. The second point is on this number one, it says you cannot use GPS based approaches to figure out your alternate minimums unless your airline, your certificate holder can do GPS based approaches. Now, many airlines can do GPS approaches, but you need to take that into account. Uh, thirdly, regarding using GPS approaches, and we'll get to this in a little bit, a GPS approach is considered one nav aid. And so just put that pin in that and remember it for later. Also, I want to point out note number three on here, wind has to be considered. So we're going to get to an example with wind. And then number four note on here says we always use height values rounded up to the next hundred feet. Okay. Once again, I'm going to unpack that with some actual examples. Okay. Let's do the first example. I picked Gainesville, Georgia. So step number one, we are going to look at the 10 dash nine page for that airport. Here is one. Okay. We're looking for any NA approaches. Now, if I look at the bottom where it says for filing as alternate, there's nothing listed as NA. Awesome. Next, I am going to look for instrument landing system or ILS approaches that would work with the current winds. I also have to check NOTAMs, make sure everything's working, but I'm going to have another example later regarding NOTAMs. This first example is the simplest. Okay. So apparently Gainesville, Georgia has got an ILS. That's good. Apparently it goes to runway five. All right, next step I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my approaches. So this one's pretty simple. I have pulled up the ILS to runway five. I've pulled up two different RNAV approaches. Okay, so I'm going to first look at my ILS. I'm going to consider my wind. In this example, we're going to pretend the wind is totally calm and that there are no NOTAMs for Gainesville, Georgia. Then I'm going to look also at any other approaches that can be used. And I have to refresh my memory about my OPSPEC C55. This says that I have to use either the one nav aid rule. That's the top part of my boxes here or the two nav aid rule. That's the second level of the boxes here. The two nav aid rule requires me to have two different runways and two different nav aids. 
So, go back to my example of Gainesville, Georgia. I have runway 5 and I have runway 23. In fact, we can look at it here. We also have runway 11 and runway 29, but that runway is too short for any kind of airplane that I would be considering for commercial operations. We're pretending we have a 737 today. So, 1129 is too short. So, we're going to look at runway 5 and 23. The FAA has made letters of interpretation that say that two different ends of the same piece of concrete are two different runways, as long as the wind doesn't prohibit me from landing on them. And today, like we said, we're going to pretend the wind is calm. Okay. So what I tell dispatchers to do at this point, once I've got my approaches pulled up, I am going to evaluate those approaches with a table of sorts. Okay. So first I'm going to write down my nav aid, the runway it goes to, the identifier, the decision altitude, or the MDA, and then I'm going to write down my visibility required for that approach. So let's do that for the ILS. I'm going to zoom in to the bottom so we know what we're talking about here. The ILS to runway 5 has a DA of 200 feet. It's in the parentheses there, and the visibility for all categories is half a mile. Okay, awesome. The identifier is IGVL, all right, and it, like I said, it goes to runway 5. So we're going to put that on my chart. Okay, now I'm going to look at the other choices here. We have an RNAV approach to runway 23, okay. If I take a look at that, I'm going to pretend that currently my airline does not have approval for LPV approaches. We're just going to pretend we have LNAV approval and that we're in a category C aircraft. So LNAV MDA is 526 feet in parentheses and category C approach visibility requires a one and a half statute mile. Okay, so I'm gonna add that to my chart. Notice I'm gonna round from 526, that rule we said at the beginning means I have to round up to whole hundreds. So that means it's 600 feet for the purposes of this. I didn't write down an identifier for the RNAV because it's GPS, so there isn't any identifier. Okay, I can also look at runway five, has also an LNAV approach. Let's zoom into that. So here we can take a look at, we're gonna pretend we have LNAV only approval with an MDA of 365 and visibility of 5 eighths. All right, so I can write this down on my table. Now you'll notice I took my 365, again, I rounded that up to 400. Visibility, I took 5 eighths and I actually rounded up to 3 quarter. Why would I do that? Well, I do that because METARs and TAFs, they don't report visibility and they don't predict visibility in eighth increments. They only do quarter miles. So to make this easy, we're going to round it up to the nearest quarter mile. Otherwise, it's not going to really be useful. Okay, so now I've got all my information on sort of a table. And I can take that and, again, apply it to this part of my op spec. So here's C55. And it says that we can apply either the one nav aid rule, that's the top. If we do the one nav aid rule, we're going to add 400 feet to either the MDA or the DA, and we're going to add one statute mile to our landing visibility requirement. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do that. With the one nav aid rule, I can choose which of these approaches to use since the wind is calm. In my example, I'm going to use the ILS because it's going to get me the lowest DA. It's clearly only 200 feet. So adding 400 feet to the 200 foot DA gives me a ceiling of 600. Adding one mile to the visibility of one half gives me a mile and a half. And now those are my alternate minimums for my derived alternate minimums. If I'm using the ILS 5 for my planning purposes as a dispatcher, so I'm going to tell my crew member that's the minimum weather that I need to have to use Gainesville as this example, if I use the one nav aid rule. Okay, but sometimes the two nav aid rule might be helpful because the two nav aid rule says for that one, if we have two different runways, apparently we do, we have five, we have two, three, okay, 
We have two different type of nav aids with two different identifiers. I've got an ILS and I've got GPS, LNAV minimums. That's two different nav aids and two different runways. Okay. If we have two different ones, then we add 200 feet to the higher DA or MDA of the two. So we have to add it to the higher and we add a half a mile to the higher of the two visibility requirements. All right, so if we do that using LNAV rule, I have to use five and two, three. So that means I have to add to the higher of the two. So I'm gonna take my 600 foot DA for, or sorry, MDA for the runway 23 RNAV approach and add 200 feet to that. And then I take my mile and a half visibility for that runway 23 because it's higher than my half a mile for the ILS and I have to use the higher of the two. I add half a mile to that and I get a ceiling of 800 feet and a visibility of two if I use ILS to five and RNAV to two, three. So in this case, as a dispatcher, I'm going to recommend we use the one nav aid rule and just base it completely on the ILS to runway five at GVL. So that works fine. Again, as long as we have calm winds, I'm just going to use the one nav aid rule. And that would be my minimums for my alternate minimums for planning purposes for this flight. Okay, but let's do an example. Let's say, for example, we could use LPV minimums. That would be pretty nifty. If our airline is able to use LPV minimums, then I could change the number. So I've pulled up the bottom of the chart again. Let's just look at runway 23, honestly, because we can't use ILS to 5 and LPV to 5 because it's the same runway. And the off-spec says we have to do two different runways. All right, so let me pull up my LPV says that I have a DA of 267 and a visibility of 7 eighths. Well, once again, 7 eighths is not a reportable visibility. We have to round that up to one. And my MDA of 267 or my DA has to round up to 300. Okay, but now let's try applying the two nav aid rule. One nav aid rule hasn't changed. I'm still using ILS to five. If we add to my ceiling, if we add to the MDA, or sorry, the DA of 300 feet, if we add 200, okay, because we're using the two nav aid rule now, and we add a half a mile, then I get 300 foot DA, add to that 200 gives me a ceiling of 500 feet, one mile visibility, again, we're choosing the higher of the two, then I add a half a mile and I get one and a half. And so if I could use LPV, it would be beneficial to me to use the two nav aid rule because I could get a lower ceiling. But if my airline, like many airlines actually, are not able to do LPV, then I would use the one nav aid rule and recommend just using the ILS. Okay, so that's my simple example. Gainesville, Georgia. That concludes part one of this two video series, but please go watch part two because that is going to give you some important information to use regarding winds and also notums that is very important for OPSPEC C55 application. Special thanks to this video sponsor, listener.io. Use code Laura for 15% off your appointment when you seek support in a safe place through online counseling specifically for pilots and use the link in the video description to check them out. Have a great day.